वेलकम टू माई चैनल एंड आई एम बैक विद यू वंस अगेन विद अनदर वीडियो ऑफ माइक्रोसॉफ्ट फ्लाइट सिमुलेटर ट्वेंटी फोर नाउ रेज आई एम एक्सप्लोरिंग द एयर बस ए थ्री ट्वेंटी न्यू एंड इन दिस रिगार्ड आई एम मेकिंग अ सीरीज ऑफ वीडियोज सो दैट आई कैन जस्ट ब्रेक डाउन ऑल द इन्फॉर्मेशन रिलेटेड टू अ फ्लाइट फॉर दिस प्लेन इन टू डिफरेंट वीडियोज सो फार आई हैव अपलोडेड वीडियोज विच इंक्लूड हाउ टू स्टार्ट दिस प्लेन फ्रॉम द कोल एंड डार्क स्टेट how to fly this plane on autopilot and how to perform an ILS approach and landing and plus there is also a bonus content <laughs> how to configure your thrust master side stick and uh, the the thrust levers um, for airbus edition for this plane so you can just go and watch those videos if you want to now in this video i will tell you how to perform an rnp or an rnav approach uh, actually these two terms are the same terms um, you can use them uh but uh, there is a slight difference rnav stands for avian navigation when you are carrying out um, gps navigation it's actually rnav and rnp is also rnav but uh, it stands for required navigational precision in this type of navigation uh, more precision uh, from the gps is required so in rnav if it's not really precise you have some you know error it's okay but in rnp you have to have some required navigational precision so that's why uh it's called an rnp approach and plus um, it's also called rnav while talking about approaches there are two types of approaches one is a precision approach and another one is a non precision approach so ils is a precision approach in which a ground based device is used and it's really precise it's uh, precise up to 100 feet above the runway what mean what it what actually it means that if you are performing an ils approach just like 100 feet above the runway Uh, you have a decision height you can see whether you align with the runway or not or whether you're going to touch down at the runway at the right point or not so um just like 100 feet above the ground so it's so precise so even in very low visibility you can still land the plane but in rnp um uh, the precision is not really high so that's why uh and plus you're using your gps so that's why at times you know the decision height can be like 300 500 or 400 feet above the ground because you know you should have visuals with the runway you should have good rvr which is known as the runway visual range because if you cannot see the runway obviously you cannot land and you cannot blindly trust the rnp and plus in ils you can also perform an auto land but rnp you cannot do auto land so you have to land it yourself you have to have visual contact with the runway so right now i'm doing this short flight from heathrow to frankfurt and uh, soon i will be reaching uh the drop of descent so before this we have to do few things uh, select the approach and the arrival so let's uh, go to the mcd let me just fix the view and uh, now i'll go to the flight plan and uh, i've already selected runway 25 right but just for you i'm just uh, doing it again so click this option go to arrivals and over here just go to onav as I, i think i've changed the view that's why this thing is happening strange things happening in uh now i can do it now it's working i think there was some issue <laughs> so arnav you have to select actually arnav um which is aerial navigation 25 right so this is the runway that i will be using so if i select arnav then i have to select the star which is standard terminal arrival and uh, as per the flight plan it's uh, this one so let's uh, select this star and that's it press insert and let's see if we have any discontinuity in it or not let me just oops i activated the brake sorry for that <laughs> okay so actually i'm new obviously for everybody uh, this uh, 2024 is new so that's why you know getting used to the controls uh, because in 2020 you had control 1 2 3 4 to basically you know um, set the views in the cockpit but now it's like shift with the shift so shift space is this and control space engages the parking brake anyhow so let's go to the flight plan and <laughs> let's see if the flight plan is okay or not 
So there is uh, this discontinuity in the flight plan, as you can see. After this point, uh, the plane is uh, actually going straight. Uh, now what happens is this, that in these type of approaches, when you have a discontinuity, uh, the ATC gives you vectors. So um, likewise, in uh, this video, uh, I am not communicating with the ATC, so I will not be getting vectors from the ATC. So that's why I will just delete this discontinuity. And uh, first of all, you have to delete this manual. You can see this manual is coming. Just delete this and then clear again and just clear the discontinuity. And now it's there. Now, the best thing about this plane is this, that, you know, no matter uh, what approach you select, it um, takes you to the runway. Obviously, if you select an ILS or you select an RNP or even VOR approach, because VORs are not at times aligned with the runway. Let's say if I land in Islamabad, it's really aligned with the runway. So if you're tracking the VOR, you're just like on the runway. But in some cases, VORs are like on the left-hand side of the runway or right-hand side. They're a bit far. So there is a procedure to basically, a uh, procedure for the approach. Uh, but it's already loaded. So once you load your flight plan, it comes. And all you have to do is just follow the flight plan and land the plane. Now let's uh, look at the approach plate. I'll press tab. I'll bring back um, these charts on the screen. You can see this RNP Y25 right is coming. So I will select this and I will look at the approach. And we have to do a few things. So uh, this there is this point DF425. Is is it there in the flight plan? DF425, 426, 480. Uh, 480 is there. And uh, let's see. So all these points will actually take me to this point. Sure, I don't know. <laughs> this, the scrolling is becoming a challenge. <laughs> it, ha it never happens, but I don't know why it's happening today. Okay. So 480. Four 480. I just, uh, yeah, here it is. So it will take us to this point for DF480. And uh, DF480 is 70.7 .7 nautical miles away from the runway. And this is the immediate fix. And then this is the final fix, which is uh, DF430. And it is 13.6 nautical miles away from the runway. At this point, the plane will actually start to follow this glide path. Now, what happens is this, that if you're doing an ILS approach, there is a localizer. And the localizer actually emits radio signals and the plane picks it up and the plane actually follows the radio signals. And this type of an approach, there is no ground-based navigation device. So that's why, um, as per the GPS, the plane knows that at this point, I have to be at 5,000. And when I'm this far from this runway, I have to be at this altitude. And when this far, this altitude and so on and so forth. So that's why, according to that, the plane actually starts to descend. And uh, then there is, a, there is an altitude, let's say, you know, over here it's uh, 351. So um, the Frankfurt the runway is 351 feet above the sea level. So that's why this is the um, uh, height. So plane will actually start to descend from here, 5,000, and it will just go to this point, and that's it. So that's how uh, the plane follows uh, this uh, glide path. Let's see if we are near the top of descent or not, because I don't want to miss this point. <laughs> okay, so now it's time to actually configure uh, the MCDU for the for the descent and for the approach. So let's uh, do some approach settings. I will just bring the charts over here. So let's go to um, this option, performance, and uh, let's go to the next phase, next page. And first of all, let's get the QNH. Actually, I'm uh, flying in clear skies. That's why QNH is not really relevant. I have changed the weather, but uh, just for this information, 1024. So it's 1024. And uh, obviously, it has to be accurate because then, you know, the plane will be doing the accurate calculations, although I will just change it as per the barometric pressure, whatever is right now in the simulator. The temperature is 
one degree. And uh, the wind is 200 degrees, four knots. So let's enter 200 slash zero four. And transition altitude is 5,000. This is where I will be changing the standard barometric pressure to the given one. And barrow. Now, barrow is given. For this runway, you have to use uh, the minimums, which is like 560. So your barrow is 560. So it's like almost um, 200 feet above the runway, where you have to have a visual confirmation that you can see the runway. So it can be from 200 feet to 550 feet. So I can further go up. I can, let's say, to be on the safe side, I can keep it at 600 or maybe 700 just to see that whether the plane is following the glide path or not and it is doing the lateral navigation correctly because it's if it's not doing the lateral navigation correctly, then obviously the plane will not land on the center line. It will be either landing on the left side of the runway or the right side of the runway. So now let's wait. I will start the descent. And as soon as I'm here um, near this point, then I will just take you from there and how you will actually perform this RNAV approach. So now the plane is near DF480. And uh, you can see it's written IF. It's intermediate fix, which is after the initial approach fix. The initial approach fix is over here. So and then after the intermediate fix, you get the final approach fix. So for final approach fix, the altitude should be 5,000 and the plane is at 5,000 feet. Now, if you refer to this table, it says that at uh, this distance, 13.6 nautical miles from the runway, the altitude should be 5,000. And from here, the descent will start at 11 um, uh, nautical miles away from the runway. Uh, the altitude should be 4,140 and so on and so forth. So just two nautical miles before the runway, 1,080. Now, the flight management guidance system will actually calculate the descent rate as per this given table because this approach is loaded in the system. So now I can activate the approach phase, um, confirm, and the speed will reduce. And with this, I can just start extending the flaps. You can see uh, the flap configuration is covering at different speeds, so below 200. 30 knots, I can have flaps by position 1 and then so on and so forth, uh, 177 knots full. Approach speed is 131 knots, that's good. With this, I can also activate approach just like you do it for the ILS. Right now you can see, I have not turned on the ILS. I can activate approach and now you can see the vertical deviation has started to appear over here. So now this vertical deviation is actually your deviation from the vertical path towards the runway. So now uh, your lateral navigation is done by the GPS. And uh, the vertical deviation will also be carried out by the GPS as per this calculation. So the plane will automatically do it. You don't have to do anything else. Now I can start extending the flaps. All the lights are on. And I can also set the barometric pressure. Now you can see uh, that uh, the standard one is coming. 1013, if I press comma, I'll get 1013. I'll change it and I'll press comma. You will see that it goes back to 1013. So you, this is how you get the uh, barometric pressure, which is there in the simulator, even if you change the weather. So you can just uh, enter it 1013 over here to get the right calculations. Now you can see the vertical deviation. This bar has started to move in the middle. And now the plane will actually start to follow this glide path. I can start to extend the flaps further. And now the plane has actually crossed this point. As you can see, the final approach fix, it has crossed it and now it's following the glide path. As um, I've said, the clear skies, that's why the RVR is really good. Runway visual range, you can see the runway, it's over there. 
So the plane is going to land. And plus, uh, kindly excuse uh, my landing skills. <laughs> I've been actually flying uh, Cessna 172 a lot uh, in the past, almost for like for a month. So I tried a few landings, uh, well, I think two or three landings with this uh, Airbus A320. Uh, my skills are a bit rusty. But kindly excuse me for that if the landing is not really good. Now you can see the descent has started. So without the LS, uh, you can just uh, do it by just simply pressing approach button and that's it. It will do the magic for you. Now the flaps are position three. So everything is good. I can close this uh, approach plate. Let's arm the ground spoilers and set the brake to medium. Good. Full flaps. Now you will see the speed will further drop. So the plane is constantly following this vertical path. Now I can lower the gears. So all the checks complete, landing gear down, signs on, cabin check, spoilers armed and flaps are full because it's a full flap landing. Uh, at this point you can just deactivate uh, the autopilot at any time. I've been uh, trying to configure this autopilot disconnect on the the Thrustmaster TC side stick for Airbus. I don't know, uh, it gets activated, but I'm unable to deactivate it. So I don't have enough time to just play around <laughs> with, with these things, you know, all day long. So I will just deactivate it like this from the simulator, not from the controller. If I'll find a fix, I'll make a video for you. <laughs> but I, I can just activate that. Life at times can be difficult <laughs> when you are just like, using uh, the Microsoft Light Simulator. So much to do, very complex. After four years, got, uh, got some hands on uh, the MSFS 2020 and now we have 24. 1, so 1,000 feet to go, uh, maybe. And this time I can just deactivate the autopilot and try to take the matters into my own hand and land the plane. Papi lights are there. I can just... Uh, now I'm following the glide path. So now almost there. Minimums. Um, I can see the runway. Aligned with the runway. And uh, that's good. Slightly on the right side. And let's activate the reverse thrust. And that's how you land this plane using uh, the RNAV approach. Below 80 knots, I will deactivate the reverse thrust and now the brakes will come into action and stop the plane so this is how uh, you do this thing <laughs> it was easy thank you very much for staying with me if you've got any questions you can ask me in the comment section or if you want to add anything to this video the comment section is there for you have a nice day hope to see you soon